you know, it's funny how things work out. One second, here you are, just trying to get by, just doing your thing. And then in the very next second, here you are, competing in the hottest draft league period. I see a lot of people talking about me, taking a team that was 0-5 and five with a minus 20 differential to playoffs. I see all of them ask exactly how I was able to pull off the defeat, about how I was able to get the job done. Well, let me answer your question with another question. How does it feel to always be everybody's last choice? How does it feel to always see someone else get the opportunities that you seek while you're left with absolutely nothing? Well, I'll tell you how it feels. It feels horrible. Because you see all of this? None of this was ever handed to me on a silver platter. If anything, I always had to take the long road for it. And it goes without saying that my path, that my road to this league has the biggest twists and turns that you could ever possibly imagine. And I say that because I wasn't just some coach that would, comp that would just compete against others throughout these four years. Oh, no, 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 no. Throughout these four years, I have played a lot of roles and have gone by many titles, from a video editor, to a trailer maker, to a league analyst, and if there's one constant that can be said about all those three roles, it's the fact that I excelled in all of them. Because you see, when the whole damn world refuses to see your work and believe in you, when the whole damn world tries to shun you down, you can either take your ball and go home or you can keep swinging. You consider every opportunity, no matter how small it is, as a blessing and try to make the most out of it. You turn that past failures of yours in your drive. You use that drive of yours to become the best goddamn version of yourself that you could ever possibly be and that's exactly what I did. It didn't matter how many times I failed. It didn't matter how many times I was shunned. If anything, I used all these opportunities, all these little opportunities that were given to me as a means of becoming better at my craft while learning from the absolute best. I turned those past failures of mine and turned it into my drive. I turned that drive of mine and turned it into my own ambition. And fast forward to now, when the opportunity came knocking at my door, I took a winless team to playoffs. And now, and now, as of this moment in time, I can truly say that I'm no longer the last choice. I'm the only choice! <sighs> like I said, I'm a man who's gone by many titles. From a video editor, to a trailer maker, to a league analyst, and a fill-in coach. Well, after this season, I'm adding another title to that list. WBE Champion. So best of luck this season, boys. May the best man win. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Tears Gunner, bringing you all the week one of the World Battle Entertainment, where I'm going to be going up against none other than Under the Radar, AKA Kelly, who is the coach of the Maryland Tar Terrapins. Now, first things first, hope you guys like the, the pre-match or the preseason promo that I gave to each and every single one of you. And you know what? Let's put on a wager, shall we? If you want more promos like this for, for before each and every single one of my matches, I want this video to reach a total of 151 likes. That's right, I'm setting a very ambitious goal, and I'm not really sure if this does end up becoming a reality, but consider this as my challenge to you. Regardless, now that this is out of the way, another thing that I also want to mention is that I apologize for mixing both the team builder as well as the battle section in one video, guys. Initially, I wanted to make them separate videos, but because of how off my narration was during the actual battle itself, I couldn't go through with my initial plans for, for the matches and... Uh, yeah, like for the future or for the future matches, trust me when I tell you, you're gonna see a much more cleaner narration. Anyways, Kelly is in my opinion one of the best Pokemon battlers here in the World Battle Entertainment right now, and his team is absolutely terrifying on so many levels. Like, but like, yeah, this is what his team is, and yeah, like these three Pokemon in general are going to be really huge nuisances for my side, and as well as the Sylveon, which. Um, I don't necessarily switch into that well because while you could say that, oh, you have a Ferretorn, 
Sylveon now gets Mystical Fire, so like, yeah, you tell me. Anyways, it should be fine. I know how, I, like, I've I pretty much thought about this match for a very long time and having some odd battles. Speaking of which, huge shoutouts to my boys OP Jellicent, Vepsis, and uh, Illusion for, get, for doing this for me. I was able to come up with a nice team overall. So, with that being said, let me show you guys what I cooked up, alright? So, for the first Pokemon, we have the star of the team, Revenge, which is my expert belt Gengar, rocking the Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Substitute, and Focus Blast, and first things first, look at Kelly's team, now back at Gengar, now back at Kelly's team, now back at Gengar. What do you see? No proper ghost answers whatsoever. So when you take that factor into consideration, the conclusion can be made that Gengar is here to play. And at the same time, there's a reason why I'm having Substitute in the first place, because unfortunately, due to Dragapult having clear body, the fact of the matter is that I won't necessarily be able to exploit Sticky Webs, which is pretty much going to be the theme of, uh, theme of my team. And um, in that regard, considering how his Dragapult will most likely have clear body, if it doesn't, I will genuinely be surprised, there is one, there, there is one huge blessing in that. And that blessing is that this thing can then no longer have Infiltrator. Meaning that if I were to set up a substitute with my Expert Belt Gengar, he won't be able to break it at all. And trust me when I tell you, I have a lot of Pokemon that I can sub the fuck up on. So yeah, that line was horrible. Why did I even say that? Anyways, that pretty much is all there is to it for Gengar. So for the next Pokemon, we have Yellow, which is my Assault Vest Lantern with Discharge, Volt Switch, Scald, and Ice Beam. And initially, you could be like, why is this Pokemon even here in the first place? Because realistically speaking, it doesn't have that great of a matchup. But at the same time, I need a proper contingency. A proper contingency to Dragon Ball considering the fact that I don't have a proper ghost answer at all. As a result, Lantern is pretty much the best Pokemon for this situation in the sense that with the Assault Vest and the Spadef investment that I got rocking on that thing, I will most certainly be able to take on Modest, Specs, Noivern, rat not Noivern, what? Dragapult rather decently well. Because even a Choice Specs Modest Shadow Ball from a Dragapult is a 4-hit KO on my Lantern. Meaning that if I am able to keep this thing healthy, if I'm able to keep this thing around, this will definitely be be what saves my ass from that from this monster. So yeah, discharge is definitely a necessity in my opinion because like it it can definitely paralyze any of his Pokemon from his Dragapult to his Sylveon and all of that. So and uh, Ice Beam is obviously there because this ensures that I will be able to take on Dragapult decently well. The special attack investment makes it so that Ice Beam. On most occasions ends up ends up being a two shot and after one run of stealth rock damage is a guaranteed to a KO so I don't have to worry about that. Skull is obviously here because Stab and Volt Switch is here because Momentum and there's a reason why I'm running no speed IVs and like putting a minus speed like minus speed nature on this thing and that is due to the fact that Sylveon is kind of a massive nuisance to my squad because, yeah, I cannot switch my Ferrothorn in considering it has Mystical Fire. So in that sense, I will be able to outslow that Sylveon, take a hit from it decently well, Volt Switch my ass on out of here, and pretty much go into whatever Pokemon to scare that thing out, which I have a lot of Pokemon for. Anyways, next up we got Victory, which is my... Heavy Duty Boots, Noivern, with Roost, U-Turn, Flamethrower, and Draco Meteor. And let me tell you right now that this Pokemon is very much one of the best glues to my squad. Because not only does this pretty much ensure that I will be able to take on Steelix decently well, considering how lack of considering the lack of switch-ins that I do have on my squad, I all it also ensures me the intel that I will be able to gather, courtesy of Frisk. And in doing so, I will be able to strategize much better of how I want to proceed with my turns and go on from there. So in that sense, along with the Heavy Duty Boots, I can take any hit from Steelix just fine unless it has Ice Fang, which I don't think it should, because I expect that to be Stealth Rocker. So yeah, that and it's shiny this time because, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Huge shoutouts and thanks go to my good friend Crest for, give it, for like giving me all of these Pokemon, by the way. Like, she's an amazing streamer who amazing streamer on Twitch, so I will definitely leave her links in the description down below. Feel free to check her out. Yeah, uh, huge thanks to her. Seriously, check her out. She's an amazing person and an amazing content creator. So, yeah. For the last three Pokemon, we have Cactus Jack, which is my Akaberry Ferrothorn with Stealth Rock, Lead Seed, Heavy Slam, and Body Press. Now, the last move is here specifically for the Obstagoon of this, because Obstagoon is an absolute monster to deal with in my squad, because that thing just... 
that thing has no switch ins at all and yeah like uh, I need whatever damage I can instigate on that thing and body press definitely gets the job done for me. Heavy Slime is here because it guarantees a 2 hit KO on that Sylveon of his. Lead Seed is here because obviously I need some form of reco recovery and it's here to be my main, main stealth rocker which I can very much do on a lot of his Pokemon and this investment pretty much makes sure that I'm able to take pretty much every single hit out there basically. But yeah, for the final two Pokemon, we have I Like Pi, which is my leftover Slurpuff with Dazzling Gleam, Protect, Wish, and Sticky Web. Because again, considering how Kelly's squad is, I need whatever asset I can get. And in that sense, the biggest asset to my team is undisputedly Sticky Web because it ensures that the majority of my offense will be able to outspeed his. And in doing so, with this investment that you see before you, I will be able to take pretty much a lot of hits just fine from his Surfetched, provided it doesn't go for Poison Jab, of course. And at the same time, this, inv uh, this 36 investment ensures that Shadow Ball from uh, Dragapult that is in Choice Specs is a guaranteed 3 hit KO on me. So, in that sense, with Leftovers, Protect, Wish, uh, Sticky Web, and Dazzling Gleam, this is very much a reliable glue to my squad. So, yeah. For the final Pokemon, we have MVP, which is my adamant Life Orb, Passimian, with Close Combat, Gunk Shot, Knock Off, and Brick Break, and this is pretty much going to be my second main breaker in the squad to coincide well with my Gengar, because look at, because again, look at Kelly's team, and back at Passimian. Now back at Kelly's team, now back at Passimian. What do you see? No switching at all. That pretty much is all there is to it for this team, guys. Hope you all enjoyed, and with that being said, enough of me rambling on, let's move on into the game, shall we? Alright guys, we are back right now after a very tedious session, and now I think we should be set. Alright, so my opposing po- my opposing po- my like, opponent has Sylveon, he doesn't have, uh, that thing. Yeah, fuck, Heliolisk, yeah, so I should be fine. Lead-wise, I'm honestly tempted to just lead off with my Noivern, because Noivern isn't- is in my opinion, like, a really fine lead here. I wish I could take more into consideration, but, like, since I'm timing out anyways, this is probably my best bet, alright. So let's see how this match happens. Since he doesn't have Surfet, I mean doesn't have a poke, doesn't have Obstagoon, I should be able to outspeed the majority of his Pokemon. And I am kinda annoyed by how I didn't set the trainer battle music. I mean set the GM battle music, but you know what? This is fine. Week one of the WBE folks. I hope you all are excited. Alright. So my opponent is my opponent Kelly's gonna lead off with his Lapras. Just like I didn't expect that on at all, honestly. But yeah. Um Alright. Frisk, I got your light clay. Gotcha. Okay, so this is um this is some um, really nice information to ga gather because now I know exactly what I need to do in order to handle this Pokemon. So if I'm able to set up my Stealth Rocks, you are definitely in range of a close combat. And he goes for straight for an Ice Shard. I feel like an absolute dummy for not choosing to uh for not choosing to like get just hard switch out. Yeah, that definitely is on me. But yeah, that was that was a really stupid play on my end. Like I'm already tilted from how I'm uh, I'm already t tilted from this whole or whole ordeal. But regardless, I know now know for a fact that if I am to go out into anything that isn't my um, Pessimian, I sh I will be in trouble. So I think my best play right now would easily have to be going out to my Pessimian. Because I let my Noivern take all that unnecessary damage, I cannot switch that in on a Surfetch. So yeah, like I'm already tilt tilting hard here, guys. But honestly, this is fine. This is fine because what I do know is that, first of all, because you whittled yourself down so much, close combat is definitely going to be able to knock you out. And honestly, I'm very much tempted to just click Knock Off here and now. I'm very much tempted to just click Knock Off here and now and go on from there, but... You know what? I'm gonna make the play. I'm clicking knockoff. The thing is, if I'm Choice Bandit, you are very much a dead Pokemon walking. Yeah, he is very much gonna switch out right now, which is absolute, uh, actually, which is like straight up awesome. As he's his best switch in is now going to be a Sylveon, and this is probably the best possible turn for me because of how much damage I was able to inflict on this thing. And now knowing that he is a Babiri Berry, he will very much he. I won't have to worry about this thing being you know like. Um, you know, that, that poison resist berry. But yeah. Overall, this is a really good situation here now. Because now, I think there's nothing stopping me from just going straight for a gunk shot. Like, there's nothing stopping me right now. So, I think that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Oh, eight minutes already. Holy shit. Alright. 
So my play here is to very much just go for a gunk shot here and now. He is going to make the good play by going straight for Protect, which you know what, is very much a respectable play on a very, very much a respectable play on Kelly's behalf. In hindsight, I probably could have just gone out into my uh, Ferrothorn and get, uh, gotten my rocks up, but honestly speaking, this is fine. Because like, yeah, Gong Shot very much knocks you out from here. Like, that much is in itself a given, and if you go out in your Steelix, there's nothing stopping me from going for a Brick Break and all of that jazz. So, taking all that into consideration and knowing that I don't have to worry about, like, what you may call it, that thing, uh... Obstagoon or anything else, I'm free to just pretty much click gunk shot again. Like I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make unnecessarily aggressive plays here and now. And granted, while going for a knockoff was definitely the best play here, as he is gonna go out into a Steelix. The thing is, this is fine. This is honestly fine because you, my friend, cannot. Hmm. Alright, so, I don't think you will be able to knock me out with one hit, so I think my best play right now would have to be easily going out into my um, Steelix, because that, quite frankly, is possibly my only way towards uh, uh, getting my getting this back up to a comfortable amount of health, so, yeah. Um, I don't think, okay, so he has room service, which is a pretty interesting tech, if I do say so myself, but... Honestly, this is this is a fine situation that I'm in because while he will be while he has very much been able to you know set up rocks on my side of the field, there's nothing stopping me from just going for roost here and getting myself back up to a decent amount of HP. Ice Fang is not gonna kill me. Um, yeah, Ice Fang is very much not gonna come even re remotely close towards knocking me out. And because I'm now being able to get this thing back up to a, a much more better amount of health, I believe I should be in a much better position per se. Yeah. As he's just gonna go straight for an Iron Head. Bro, that's not gonna even do... That's gonna do actually a decent chunk of damage. But honestly, this is fine. Because since I do happen to be the Heavy Duty Boots, I will most certainly be able to take your hits much more better. And now, since I'm in a much better amount of health, I can now very much take this as the chance to get the hell out of here, first of all. I'll very much take this as the chance to get the hell out of here. And here... All right. I know for a fact that he's not going to click Ice Shark twice. Yeah, nobody nobody does that. If he does, then he's a mad lad. But now that I know he has Ice Shard, he has every reason to either A, Gigantamax up here and now, or B, go for like any other move that he wants to click per se. All right, yeah, see? This is, this is how I knew that he was going to do that. Because now, since he made that play, I now know exactly what I need to do in order to play around this threat because Gigantamax Lapras is a Pokemon that you very much cannot sleep on and while I could have definitely take this, taken this as a chance to go hard out into my Ferrothorn, the fact of the matter is that I don't necessarily want to give him the chance to uh, like do, to do whatever he wants really. And what I just said didn't make any sense but basically what I'm trying to get at here is that now since he made this play, I can now go out into my Frostless. What? No, my Lantern. All right, so apparently I forgot Pokemon, guys. I'm really sorry about that. But like, yeah, Lapras is very much the best Pokemon to go to here now, I think. And now with him going for the G-Max Resonance, I should be able to take that decently well. Not as well as I would like to, but it's better than like it's better than most uh, most scenar most scenarios, I guess you could say. So here. I don't necessarily want my uh, want this thing to take another hit, but at the same time, I don't see myself having much choice in the matter, do I? Because if he has the max quick, that's actually gonna suck. That's actually just gonna straight up suck. So here, what I think I'm gonna do is honestly just all right. Think more rationally. I am going to. I want to go out in my Cactus Jack. Alright, so I... Look, the fact is I need this thing healthy. I need this thing healthy no matter what. So, I think... My best place to just go out in this, honestly. It sucks that I'm, like, in the back foot this much, this early. But it would seem that I don't have a choice on the matter. In hindsight, I probably could have just, like, gotten as much damage that I could on that, um, on that Steelix of his. So that definitely is on my play, on my, like, that definitely is on me. Because now, like, he has this free defense boost, right? 
So here he has one more hit left, which actually sucks. But I think I should be able to take it uh, decently well with my bulk. So the way, the only way for me to get back from here would have to be definitely, first of all, waiting for that, waiting for his, uh, what you may call it. I forgot, well, I forgot that term. Hmm. All right. I need, I need to calm down. So basically what I need to do. Yeah, see, he went out into his uh, far-fetched, I mean, sir-fetched, which is actually pretty, which is fine, honestly, because now with me being able to set the seeds up on him, I can very, I can very well like put my start putting myself in a spot where I will be able to do whatever I do whatever I want. And speaking of doing whatever I want, I think the best play for me right now would have to be undisputedly setting up my uh, setting up my webs here now. He sees I have a Noivern, so chances are he could choose to go for a knockoff as opposed to uh, going for a poison jab. I don't see him doing that honestly, but if he does, like very good play on my uh, very good play on Kelly's behalf. But he's gonna go for a close combat. That actually does a very considerable chunk of damage to me, which is very much unfortunate. But I think with the leftovers, as well as the health that I'm being able to get back in the process, all right. So 140 divided by 189. Alright, so I have 74% health. And honestly, I want to set up webs. To me, if I'm going to put myself back up and put myself in a winning position, I need to start setting the, uh, setting the stones towards making that become a reality. And to me, the only possible way to... Okay, don't die, please. Okay, cool. Thankfully, he's going to crit me in the process, which really does suck. But thankfully, he's not going to be able to poison me. Because if he was, that definitely would have uh, thrown me, uh, thrown my ass for a loop big time. So yeah, that's uh, definitely something I can take solace in. And now that he has whittled himself down so much, there's nothing stopping me from going for protect here and now. Because a, he could either choose to get the defog off, which he doesn't, because his surfetch. Uh, I assume that his surfetch doesn't even have that move to begin with. But like this is, um, I wouldn't say like I'm in a really fine position right now, but I would say I'm in a much better spot here now because the thing is with webs up, I'm going to apply some some sense of pressure on him. And now since I, like there's nothing stopping me from going for protect. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here now because through going for protect, all right, cool. At first second I was thinking, did I get the turn? Did I miscount by chance? But thankfully that's not the case as now I'm going to be able to get myself, you know, get more, uh, get my, get myself more health back, which is definitely going to be useful because now what I will be able to do is most certainly go out into my cactus jack. Should I go out into my cactus jack is the question. Mm, how much time do I have left? All right. So I have five minutes. I have five minutes of overall time. And I don't think I'm in a position to make any sort of an aggressive plays here now. So here, I think my best way of handling the situation would have to be, first of all, going out into my Cactus Jack. Because since I do, don't even have the, don't even, I, I, how do I say this? Since I don't even have the Iron Head to begin, like, Iron Head to begin with, I won't necessarily be able to, this set won't necessarily be able to check, you know, Dragapult that well enough. So, yeah. Here, what I'm going to do is just pretty much take this as the chance to set up my rocks here and now. Because to me, the biggest, like, if, if there is any way for me to, like, win this game, it would have to be making sure I get my hazards up and go on from there. So, like, yeah, I'm going to be able to outspeed his Steelix, which is very much a surprise. And he's going to go for a Fire Fang here now, and, and unfortunately miss, which really does suck, bro. I'm really sorry about that. But at this point in time, I need to take whatever I can get. And if it means keeping my Aukaberry around, then that is exactly what I'm going to do. As now, I'm going to pretty much take this as the chance to go out into my victory. And in doing so, I'm going to be able to find out exactly what item you are and be able to like start planning my countermeasures. So here, I'm going to find out that his... Oh yeah, his, 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 his is the room service. I keep forgetting. But yeah, he's going to miss his Firefang again, which is 
like really unfortunate and I'm really sorry about that my dude but here and now I am going to very much just see I could just hit what's in what's in front of me and not have to worry about a damn thing at all but at the same time there's nothing stopping me from clicking u-turn um I don't see yeah okay cool Kelly's not gonna stay in and this is where the match is gonna start shifting more toward uh, more towards my favor because now he is not only going to take uh, sticky webs he's going to take stealth rock damage and now considering his team uh, considering his team composition I don't particularly remember any Pokemon on his side that wants to take on my Gengar here and now so taking that into consideration I am going to go start going going out into my revenge and you know what they say folks revenge is a confession so out comes my Gengar and this is pretty damn awesome because now there's nothing stopping me from setting up a substitute here and now and seeing exactly what he wants to do per se because now that I have now that I first of all have my stealth rocks up a stealth rocks and my sticky webs up I will know exactly what set his dragapult is so if say it happens to be infiltrator then first of all you're not gonna even be able to outspeed me second of all you are very much you are like through wait how do, how do I say this while it will most certainly suck through him being clear body the fact of the matter is that I most certainly will be able to take any sort of hit you could potentially want to go for as now he's just gonna he's just gonna go out into his good like hard switch out and this is pretty good yeah this is pretty good because now first of all you're gonna take sticky webs and self rock damage meaning that now is the time where I'm going to go straight for a focus blast so that is exactly what I'm gonna do all right all right focus blast let's go come on Please hit, please hit, please, please hit, please hit. All right, there we go, Gengar. Gengar is going to hit his Focus Blast. Will this be able to knock him out? Yes, it will. And this is where the tides have turned, ladies and gentlemen, because not only is Sticky Webs up, not only is Stealth Rock up, now I'm going to find out exactly what said his Dragapult could potentially be should he choose to bring it in on my face. All right. There we go. Whew. This is a really good... I'm in a really good spot right now. And I'm not necessarily, like, too, too sure how things are going to go from here. All right, so out comes the Drift Bloom to my... Okay, this thing is heavy-duty boots as fuck. Because otherwise, you, my friend, definitely would not have been able to take... Like, otherwise, you would, you would have taken damage. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I'm, what, what, what's up with me, honestly. But, like, yeah, I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball. Unfortunately, just come really shy towards knocking him out. And here he is going to opt to go straight for a Shadow Ball, which honestly speaking is fine. Because now, I'm going to find out exactly if Drift Blim gets a move called Shadow Sneak. Because he, he could potentially, because he very much could honestly. So, Drift Blim. Not Dracofish, bro. Do you get Shadow Sneak? Alright, it doesn't get Shadow Sneak, which is pretty damn awesome. No Sucker Punch either. Alright, cool. So now, like, again, I got no reason to click any other move. I'm going to go straight for a Shadow Ball. And now that I know exactly what set your Drift Bloom is, and not this Unburdened set, um, I will be, Gengar is pretty much going to be able to get two kills here now, and this is pretty damn awesome, honestly. This is a pretty damn, this is a pretty damn good position, because now I will be able to find out exactly what set your Dragapult is. Yep. Out comes the Dragapult, and now you are going to take Stealth Rock damage, and you are clear body as fuck. Yeah. So it kind of sucks that I was not able to knock you out with my, uh... Alright, so how do I go around this position? Hmm. So I still have four minutes left on the clock. And honestly, I could just sack off my Slurpuff here and now. Because if he's Dragon Dance, that would actually suck. Uh, I'm probably going to regret this. I'm, I'm most likely going to regret this play. But I think Slurpuff is probably the best sack of choice here and now. Alright, so he's gonna go up to go straight for a Shadow Ball, which is kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, it's fine. 
it's fine because like as of now i genuinely don't need any sort of like uh what, what you how do you say this i i genuinely don't need any sense of i don't need webs anymore in this matchup yeah is what i'm trying to say because now that i have intel on that uh on his what's what's that thing called yeah uh jake yeah i don't have to really worry or worry in the grand scheme of things and I can very much set my plans up in such a way where I will definitely be able to come, come out as a victor. As now, since he is forced to get the hell out of here, I will most certainly be able to, first of all, go for a Leech Seed. Definitely, I will be able to, be, I will be able to go straight for a Leech Seed here and now. Hopefully, I'm able to connect. Thankfully, Ferrothorn is going to do just that. And now, because I've been able to inflict more damage on him through the Leech Seed in itself, I have absolutely nothing stopping me from going hard out into my Noivern. And while you could say, oh, you could always go out in your Gengar, that's a bad play. Because I will most certainly not be able to... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to win through that. So, yeah. Since I'm at full health and I'm heavy duty boots, it doesn't matter what he goes for. So he ends up possessing the leak, which kind of explains why that thing did so much damage to me. Like, why he was able to get the critical hit in the first place. But, yeah, regardless, this is a this is honestly a very fine position that I'm in here and now. Because now I will be able to get more damage off on this thing through Leech Seed. And be able to get myself back up to a more comfortable amount of health. Meaning that now there's nothing stopping me from just pretty much going straight for a uh, Flamethrower here and now. Because you are in minus one anyways, I don't need to think much about this play. And considering how I have a uh, personal timer running down on my ass anyways, I don't have a choice on this in this matter. So... Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. As now, what I will most certainly be... Okay, yeah, that probably was a bad play on my end. Because now there's really nothing stopping him from just going straight for a mystical fire on my ass. Oh, wait, is that a... Okay, that was a, two, that was a critical hit. I'm so sorry about that, my friend, but... I still have three minutes on the clock. Honestly, I'm just gonna go for a U-turn. Th this probably is a bad play and like contributes towards me not being able to think, th think th things through considering the timer. But I think that is the best course of action for me to take here and now. Yeah, that probably was that probably wasn't the right play for me to make. Yeah, the, I sh I probably should have just sacked off my Noivern in hindsight. Yeah. So he's gonna just throw up a wish in the air, which is honestly fine. Like that is as fine as it can be for me because now there's nothing stopping me from just going straight for a heavy slam. You could very well, you could, like, if he chooses to attack me, which he doesn't, he chooses to go for a protect, which, you know what, is a very fine play in itself. He, first of all, will be able to get himself back up to a more comfortable amount of health, but at the same time, I, this is fine, because his, uh, like, Surfetch is already whittled down as it is. I don't think, I don't see his Lapras doing much to me at all, other than going for body presses. And since the worst case scenario didn't end up becoming a reality, now... I can just choose to continue going for heavy slams. Yes. So I'm sorry my narration is off, guys. I'm 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 like thinking more as I'm like clicking all my moves. But yeah, uh, he's just gonna have to go straight for mystical fire. That is thankfully not gonna do nearly enough towards uh, to Warren and Oko. As now I will most certainly be able to go straight for heavy slam, and this will definitely knock you out. Oh my god, it doesn't. All right, so I underestimated Sylve Sylveon's bulk, which is honestly pretty whack. Which is actually pretty whack, not gonna lie. So for me to win this match, I need to make sure my uh, my thing doesn't take any it take any more damage. My lantern doesn't take any more damage. Yeah. While it does suck that he's gonna be able to knock me out here now, I think. I still should be okay.
All right, no. Why am I even thinking about this? Right, so... I think overall, I should still be in an okay, okay position. Okay, I probably should have done that. Hmm. So my time is already very much limited. So, I mean, there's nothing stopping me from just clicking discharge here now. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. In hindsight, I guess I could have made the more aggressive play by going out in my Pissimian. Because it would have covered his play of going for Wish and so, and so on. But it should be fine regardless. Because now I'm going to be able to knock out that Sylveon of his. And now I'm in a position where I... Am I in a good position by any means? Is the question. We'll have to wait and see. Captain Sniff. Alright, so I think the best way for me to win this game would pretty much have to be relying on my Passimian to take one hit from that Dragapult of his. Yeah. It goes for a leap. Okay. And that crit me too. Hmm. Alright. I mean, that's fine. Because now there's nothing stopping me from just dropping a hot one on you. So thankfully, uh, yeah, thankfully Noivern's gonna be able to hit the move. And I think, yeah, that definitely will be able to knock you out. I guess Flamethrower could have done the same too, but honestly, since, since I'm in no position to run Calcs in the first place, I'm not necessarily too, too sure if this will work out for me, is what I'm trying to say, you know? Alright, this is fine. Yeah. Wait, I think I can actually live that. Or not. <laughs> Or not. Alright. So. What next, huh? Hmm. If he specs, then you know what? Fair play to him. In oh wait, okay, I think I made another misplay. So what I should have done was gone out in my Gengar, and then gone back out in Noivern and find out exactly what set he was. Yes. So that definitely is an oopsie on my behalf, as one could say. Mm-hmm. Alright. Ah, oh, fuck, he has Ice Shard! Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I goofed up big time. I completely forgot he has Ice Shard, guys. Holy shit. If he, if he... Yeah, I definitely should have. Uh, I definitely should have gone out into my, uh, what you may call it, my Gengar there, and just let it go down, I guess. Because now I'm probably very much in range of a knockoff, and I doubt whether two knockoffs will be able to. No I mean, I doubt whether you will. You, I doubt whether you'll die. Yes, you'll die to Ice Beam from my Lantern. Okay, yeah, that's specs. So I think overall, I just threw the game big time. Yep. Actually? I know you could very much well have HP investment, so I think my best way of winning now is to just fish for a discharge para. Will this put... Yeah, I think I probably lost this, guys. Come on. 
Can I get a discharge para? Can I get a discharge para? Can I get a discharge? Yes, we did do get the discharge para. And I'm so sorry for doing this, Kelly. I am so, so sorry for doing this. But unfortunately, it was the only way. And yeah, I I'm not proud of this victory, guys. I am not proud. Oh my god. And now he gets paralyzed to add insult to injury. Yeah, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, Kelly. But yeah, that is going to be week one. We, the Bullet Punch Club, have been able to win this through 2-0 fashion. And honestly, like again, it goes without saying I'm not proud of this victory at all through carrying out such measures. But it probably, it honestly was the only way to get the job done. So like, yeah, regardless, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I'm not proud of this game at all. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, with that, with that, the Bullet Punch Club is now officially 1-0 in the 1-0 in the WBE. Honestly, this was like a really, a really important match to begin with. So, yeah, the fact that I hacked Kelly out of uh, hacked Kelly out of this game was very much unfortunate. But yeah, that was honestly my only way towards getting the job done. And now that I think about how this match went, there are many things I could have done differently that would have played a factor. But Regardless, guys, that's pretty much going to be it for the week one of the WVE. The Bullet Punch Club is now 1-0. Not in the best way, but we are in 1-0 right now. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to keep the winning streak going and I will be able to adapt to how their timer works. So yeah, with that being said, if you enjoyed this anyway, feel free to drop a like on this video. And with that, best of luck to my opponent Kelly for the rest of the season. And yeah, I'll see you all on the flip side. Peace!